Could Vikings make something close to modern reverse draw crossbow? I'm writing a story about a modern age Hamer medievalist who time travels to the Viking Age. Is it possible to make a crossbow with similar performance to modern age crossbows without using modern materials such as aluminum, nylon, and carbon fibers? I'm expecting a result to be something with wooden frame, horn and sinew limbs, and steel cams and wheels. Cocking mechanism could be omitted if unfeasible. I'm assuming that all technologies are available in that time from across the whole of Eurasia. Metallurgy, bow making, would be accessible and can be traded for. I'm looking for something with similar performance to the modern crossbow, which has 470 fps, 182 fp, 246 joules of kinetic energy. For comparison, medieval longbow, 95 pounds draw weight, 45 joules. Medieval crossbow, 450 pounds draw weight, 53 joules. Point two two L. R. 168 joules 9 mm 467 joules 308 3217 joules source Todd's workshop While the parts themselves can be replicated using medieval tech they have nothing to do with a bow's maximum velocity Where maximum velocity comes from your materials have various properties depending on if they are in the belly or backing of the bow that determine its snap More snap means a higher base acceleration Wooden bows tend to have a lower snap than something like fiberglass, so, medieval archers compensated for this with arm length. This works up to a certain scale because the snap is compounded across the length of the arm. Arm length compounded with materials determines the ideal maximum velocity. What about draw weight and length? These are important factors behind a bow's power but not speed. A bow with a lower draw weight will receive more relative resistance from the weight of your arrow meaning a bow with a higher draw weight can more effectively fire a heavy arrow, and will shoot a little bit faster because it can better overcome the arrow's inertia, but still caps out based on the material limitations. It's like this, a strong man can not throw tennis ball much faster or farther than a weaker man with similar technique, but a strong man can throw a bowling ball much faster and farther because he can overcome the weight better. Medieval war arrows were on average two to three times heavier than hunting arrows so they could better penetrate armor which is why draw weight was so important on a warbow. Draw length is similar to draw weight in that it mostly contributes to doing a better job of reaching the maximum velocity that your snap allows. A greater draw length gives you more time to accelerate the arrow allowing you to reach closer to your ideal maximum velocity before it leaves the bow, but again, does nothing to increase the ideal maximum velocity. So where does this leave you? Since the Viking Age mostly predates spring steel, fiberglass, etc., the fastest bows you can really achieve will probably be just over 200 fps using either a bamboo and hardwood composite or a horn and sinew composite. Neither of these materials would particularly benefit from the compound bow or reverse draw crossbow design. Compound bows need to take advantage of modern materials that bend very little but have lots of snap. Traditional materials have too much bend for this. The reason for reverse draw crossbows is because those same materials have more snap in the compression state than the tension state. In contrast, most traditional materials get more of their driving force from the tension of the backing material than the compression of the belly material, so, inverting them to be compression dominate would make them worse. If you want a better projectile speed, range, the Roman Manubalista and Scorpions could hit speeds much closer to a modern crossbow using coiled sinew cords, but again, its design would not benefit from the compound or reverse draw mechanisms. Vikings could almost definitely make them if they tried, but they were really heavy weapons compared to bows or crossbows, so, the trade-off is only worth it in certain cases. If you fast forward to the later medieval era though, you will see spring steel crossbows start coming into play. These were limited to very short draw lengths because the arms could not bend much, but they had tons of snap and draw weight. If you were to add compound or reverse draw mechanisms to these, then you would be able to achieve something much closer to a modern crossbow without having to make something too heavy. That said, spring steel was never an easy thing to make, even in the late medieval period, it took a highly experienced smith to properly temper the steel without the use of modern high temperature thermometers. <laughs>